All right, I titled this talk, um, Moving Forward. This was I, some of the thoughts I had going through my mind um, before camp. Um, and then, uh, I can't remember who it was. I was trying to figure out who, who used the, the Johnny Cash quote in camp. Does anybody remember? Was it Pastor Dick? Pastor Steve? Was it? Okay. Yeah, so that, that um, kind of went along with the thoughts going through my mind. So I'm just going to read that quote real quick. Um, Being a Christian isn't isn't for sissies. It takes a real man to live for God, a lot more man than to live for the devil. And the the world wants us to think differently. It doesn't it wants us to think completely opposite that that being a Christian is 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 weakness and um and living in the world like especially with young boys and men growing up uh, making it like you're doing these things and you're, you look manly because you're doing it, but really it's it takes a lot more of a of a person to stand up for for God to stand up for what's right, um, and and the world just has that completely twisted, and it's even that much more so for uh, um, the spirit filled saints that are walking in the in the Lord. It's much much easier to give up as soon as we face adversity. And to, and to just um, sit and just give up, put our hands in the air and say, I'm done with this, um, and not struggle through. <clears throat> it, and, and walking in the Spirit is completely against the flesh. It's completely against it. So we're constantly battling with that in, in, our, in our walks, uh, fighting against the flesh and the Spirit. And if we're not building up the Spirit inside of us, um, the flesh is going to win out. If we're not praying every day, if we're not reading every day, and we're not doing God's will, the flesh is going to win out. And I've said in my talks and in, talk, in previous talks with me, with just myself, I noticed that especially when when you stop praying, just the way your mind thinks, it's like a switch gets turned off, and the flesh kind of takes over. And we don't want that. We want to be led by the Spirit, and kind of on the, that same thinking. The flesh is selfish, and the and the and the spirit is selfless. Um, and God's teachings, as as far as when Jesus was on here on this earth, every, everything He did was completely selfless. It was for the betterment of mankind to have the opportunity to have the spirit inside of us. And we have to take that, and we have to cherish that. Sometimes, especially for people that have been in the Lord a long time, or um, and like myself, being raised up in the Lord, sometimes we can take that for granted. And we can't take that for granted. We have to know what we have is precious in the sight of in the sight of God, but just how how important, how powerful it really is, and um, how much weight that carries. Um, and being that good testimony for the Lord, that's it's just so very important. Um, let's go to uh, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-eight. And we know that to them that love God, all things work together for good, even to them that are called according to his purpose. When we're struggling through a, a, a situation, a trial, or we're having a problem with a brother or sister, we need to remember who's on our sideline. We have God on our sideline, and, and it's, as long as we're serving God and we're doing his will, that God's going to bless that situation. He's never going to leave us without. And... It can be real easy when we're in the heat of a trial and we're in the, in the middle of a battle to think that, oh, it's like this is just impossible. There's nothing, this, there's no end to this, there's no escape. And then if we just read down to verse uh, 31, 831, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? <clears throat> and if God, and that's such a true statement, if God is for us, who is against us? There's nothing that can that stands in our way. Everything that stands in our way is is just it's the flesh speaking to us, and we can't let that get in the way, because God's gonna is the true champion, and it's like um, it's like when you look at in sports, if you have like a pro boxer going against an amateur boxer, there's no comparison. There's just no, it's just there's not a there's not a battle whatsoever, and we have to remember that, and we have to take comfort in that. And sometimes we are gonna get kicked in the teeth, or we're gonna get we're gonna feel like we got we got knocked out, but Honestly, 
the only thing that really matters is what God thinks of us. What man thinks or what an individual thinks of us, it doesn't really matter. If we're standing up for the things of the Lord, that's that's what really matters at the end of the day. And and that statement like Johnny Cash was saying, it's it's that's such a true statement as far as it's it's much easier to fall in the um, the hands of the devil than it is to follow God. Um, another quote that I actually really like, I know it's kind of cheesy, but oh well, I like it anyway. It's, <laughs> it's from uh, the movie, uh, the, the Rocky movies, and um, something Rocky said in, in one of the movies is, it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And that's, 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 a, that's, that's it. I mean, we're going to get hit, we're going to get punched, and we're going to have to just continue going forward. But are we going to just throw that towel in? Are we going to just throw it in and say, I'm done? Or are we going to fight through? Are we going to persevere through that battle? That's, that's the question we have to ask ourselves all the time. And that's what we have to, just like a, a, an athlete trains and, they're, and, they're, and they, they get stronger and they get faster and they, they get all, whatever they're trying to accomplish. That's what it's like when we're praying and we're reading and we're doing God's will. We're getting stronger for God. We're get, our shields are, are iron sharpeneth iron. And we just have to remember those things because it can be real easy to get caught up in our in our day-to-day -day routines and forget what we're what our real purpose is. And it just seems like things are happening faster and faster. Um, and like myself personally, it's real easy because I I'm I'm trying to I, I'm working, I'm going to school, and I'm doing all these things. And it can be real easy to forget to pray or or get, forget to to read a script uh, read the scriptures and. Like I said just a minute ago, as, as soon as you do that, as soon as I do that, my mind starts starts fluttering a bit, and it's like I'm not really um, in it for the for the Lord. And I just have to remember that I have to get back on track when I'm feeling that way, and my mind is not quite where it needs to be. Uh, that's when I gotta go. Oh, wait a second! I need to pray. I need to do these things for God, and then I get back on that track. And it's just real important to recognize that, and everybody's walks a little bit different. Um, let's go to. Uh, Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen. Every scripture inspired of God is also profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, which is in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, furnished completely unto every good work. Something that I've, it's happened, I know it's happened to a lot of people in this room, if not everybody, is when you're going through a trial or you're going through a hard time and you don't know what the answer is and you pick up the Bible and you just turn to a random page and something just leaps up at you at that moment. And it... And I've had that mo that happen to me many times, and it's like the, the hair on the back of my neck just stands up. And you know when that happens that it's the Lord, because out of that whole out of the whole book, what's the chances of you pulling to that one scripture without both the Lord's intervention in that? And when we're under duress and we're under that we're under attack at that moment, that can just mean the world to us when we read those scriptures. And like we read, just read in Romans, God's never going to leave us or forsake us. And we just have to remember that when we're going through our trials. And this world's not getting any better. It's just going to get worse and worse. And as those times come, it, that's just that much more of a reason why we need to draw closer to God. And um, it can be, there's just a lot of distractions out there, especially for kids that are like in high school and, and younger ones. Um, they're just getting pulled in so many directions, and it's just it's it, it's too, it's a lot lot to deal with, and you just have to remember to keep moving forward and 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 keep trudging on because the Lord's going to bless you, He will bless you, and we just have to remember He's always going to keep keep us going. Um, let's go to um, Matthew chapter six, verse thirty three.
or Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But, ye, but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be ad added upon uh, up to you. Um, so God ha has our back. He's never gonna. He's never gonna leave us. Just like I was talking about um, in previous scripture. <clears throat> and like I was just talking about as well. There, there's, there's gonna be times where we're gonna think there's no way that um, that a problem can be worked out. Like there's no, there's no answer. Or we can think that we can let the flesh try to lead us and say, "This is what we, what I want, and I want this, Lord." And it's not God's will. And when that, when we get that in front of us, and we don't get the answer we want, we have to be able to accept that. And and it's like I an analogy I really like is like it's like we see in two D. We just see what's in front of us, and God sees in three D. And He's above, looking down, and He sees the whole the whole situation, whatever's going on. And sometimes we don't understand. It's like why, Lord, why are you doing this? Like what's what's going on? Um, but it, when we're waiting, when we wait patiently, it always works out. And it, it's sometimes it's kind of funny how that works. And we can we can stomp our feet, and we can throw a fit like a two year old. Um, but at the end of the day, the Lord Lord has it under control, and he's and he and he does every single time. Every single time you give it up to the Lord, he he has it under control. And <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, and that's just a promise that God has given to us, and we know that God can't lie. Um, and that's a concept that it can be real hard for us to comprehend or understand, because um, we live in the flesh and in the natural sense. But God literally cannot lie. And when when God says something in the Bible, it's a hundred percent truth. There's it's nothing less. And we can take comfort in that as well when we're going through a trial. That when we read these these scriptures. That they're a hundred percent truth. There's no, there's no wavering from whatever the Bible says. Um, let's go to First John chapter one. First John chapter one and verse nine. Okay. If we, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make a liar and his word is not in us. We're all going to make mistakes. No matter, none of us are perfect. And when we, when we do make those mistakes, it's very important to recognize that and ask for forgiveness and to move forward. If the first thing you have to do is you have to be able to recognize the problem before you can move forward. And the, the amazing thing is, and, and that's why Jesus died on the cross for us, is that those sins were forgiven. Um, you were forgiven before you, even, before you even committed the sin. And, and we just have to remember that, that when, we, when, we do have, when we do have issues that we need to work through, that we just need to get down and ask for forgiveness, and we got it, and then just get up, dust our feet off, and move forward. It can be real easy to get stuck in in, in a mindset of like, "Woe is me!" Like, "Lord, why?" Um, I just, I there's nothing I can do. I'm never, I'm not going to be worthy. And we got to remember, too, none of us are worthy. The Lord, that's why Jesus died on the cross, and he, so we were able to have the Spirit live inside of us. So we had um, the Holy Spirit, and we were able to use that in our lives every day. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Romans 12 verse 1. All right. I beseech... I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. And be not fashioned according to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The world is completely backwards. Um, 
And God's word is completely black and white as far as what's right and wrong. And the world is really good at turning that black and white to gray and, and confusing people. And as time goes on, you're seeing that more and more. People don't know what's right or wrong. Um, what, what's, what's, what's acceptable or what's not acceptable is completely blurred. Um, and people are completely lost. And the Bible talks about in the end times, good will be bad and bad will be good. And... And for people in the world, that can be very scary. Like, what, like what is going on? And they're looking for a savior and some politician, or they're looking for something, um, and they're not going to find it in the world. The only ways they're going to find it is, is through God, through receiving the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongue and walking with the Lord. That's how they're going to find it. And we have to make sure that we're the people that go out before this world, and we preach the gospel to this world. And our testimonies are very important. Guarding our testimonies, um, especially when you're out, um, people, when you're working in, in that setting, it's very important. Like I've worked at different uh, environments when I was in the well, when I was um, in the welding field, and that's a bunch of guys, and it's a rough, it's a rough crowd, and <clears throat> and they're always. I was always coming under. You just have to be having a normal conversation with people, and then something which that would be said, some kind of. Uh, something completely immoral and they're just they're just sitting there and they'd be waiting for me to make that mistake um, and it's so important that we don't because as soon as you do your testimony gets tainted and we don't want that we want to stand strong yes we're going to make mistakes but we got to just make sure we stay strong for the things of the Lord um, so one last scripture let's go to Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 and then verse 1 There, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Jesus Christ. There is no more condemnation to them that are in Jesus Christ. Like I was talking about earlier, it can be real easy when we make mistakes to get in that mindset that we're um, woe is me type type deal, and we can't do that. Um, we're forgiven. We're we're the saints. Of, we're the saints of God, and we have to we have to. Accept that when we do make a mistake, just dust our feet off and go on. <clears throat> so just in closing, no matter what we are going through, whatever it is, God is on our side. And we just have to keep moving forward. And all people said. Amen. All right. This time we're going to have a time of prayer. If you have any needs.